Okay, so remember, avoid ephedra unless it's under medical supervision. Just not a good idea to uh, be playing around with supplements that don't really know exactly what they're going to do. So be cautious. But huge opportunity, those of you heading towards pharmaceutical careers or medical careers. Plants hold huge promise for healthcare. Can we do more research on it and understand it and actually get data to support what we want to learn or what we're trying to do with these things? Okay, so future research possibilities for somebody in this group. So, all right, now let's tackle our last phylum of conifers or phylum of gymnosperms, I'm sorry. <clears throat> so the last phylum I want to talk about here is the ginkgo phyta. Now, when we look evolutionarily, ginkgos are the youngest. So this group evolves around 200 million years ago. <clears throat> they are not what we would think of when we think of a traditional gymnosperm. Again, gymno means naked seed. Most of the time when we think gymnosperm, we think pine trees and needles. Ginkgos do not have that. When we look at them, they are deciduous. They will lose their leaves every fall. So they have leaves, not needles. Every fall, the leaves turn yellow, this beautiful, a lot of times very beautiful, brilliant yellow color, and they drop their leaves. Um, very, very attractive plants. So quite often they are used in... Uh, urban settings, city environments where they want to landscape things, they'll often use ginkgo plants, ginkgo biloba, which is the only member of ginkgo phyta that we're, we're going to be looking at here. So deciduous trees that lose their leaves every fall, these guys will have exposed seeds. They, this is a seed down here, this big fat fleshy thing. So they, they're they're not real attractive, but those are the seeds of the ginkgo, which is why they are qualified as gymnosperms, because they have exposed seeds. Um, these plants are dioecious, which is part of the problem. The female plants smell like rotten butter. So when people are using these in urban environments for ornamental plants, decorated decoration, things like that, they most of the time do not plant the females. Now the whole tree doesn't smell like rotten butter. It's when they produce the seeds, the seeds stink. They, they're, they're not real pleasant smelling. So imagine walking down the sidewalk in a larger city and it's smelling like rotting butter every summer because all these seeds falling off the ginkgo biloba tree stink. So that has led to some problems. We tend to selectively plant males, which screws up the entire population balance of the uh, ginkgo biloba plant. Uh, but they are tolerant to air pollution, which again is why they are used in urban environments. Um, we do see medicinal value. Research is being done. Do we use leaves, seeds, bark, root systems, etc., to try to get a better feel for all the different medicinal values that can be obtained from ginkgo biloba. That is not their ecological niche though. Ecological niche, producer, base of the food chain, human derived value, medicine, and ornamental value in urban environments. So when they go to reproduce, just here's a general picture, one plant, the male plant produces the male flowers, pollination occurs, transferring the pollen over to the female flowers, fertilization occurs, 
and then the seeds that get produced are on these little stems and this is what they look like these little naked seeds um, and again the seeds smell like rotten butter so <clears throat> most people don't want a female ginkgo biloba in their yard because of the smell from this plant so this gives us the big picture of the gymnosperms earliest evolutionary group of seed producing plants they've done well they've had great diversity but we can see the diversity is declining and a big part of that is just simply competition against the angiosperms so as we go into the next lecture next powerpoint the angiosperm powerpoint it's going to talk about the evolution of angiosperms and why those guys are so competitive and so successful compared to all of the plant groups we've talked about so far so if you are ranking them in success and success being measured by diversity angiosperms are number one by far then we go to the gymnosperms then we go to the vascular seedless plants then we fall down all the way to the non-vascular seedless plants when we rank them in order of success all right so this wraps up gymnosperms go to the other powerpoint to tackle seed plants and the angiosperms